Well, hello, and welcome to Stop, Let's Team Up Those Daring Defenders, episode 15, where we will be discussing Defenders, volume 1, issue 5. I'm kind of, I just finished reading it for the second time, um, and I enjoyed the heck out of it. But let's give you the basic details. This is Defenders, volume 1, number 5. It was released on January 23rd, 1973. Uh, its cover date is April 1973. It is called, this story is called World Without End, question mark, so World Without End. Um, creators are writer Steve Englehart, penciler Sal Buscema, inker Frank McLaughlin, colorist Glenna Swine, letterer Charlotte Jetter, editor Roy Thomas. Roll Call, Defenders, Valkyrie, Doctor Strange, Submariner, The Hulk. Supporting characters, Namorita and Aragon, uh, um... Antagonist Cyrus Black's Disciples, unnamed Hashid, first and only appearance of the Disciples, the Omegatron, uh, and a bunch of other stuff. Bump, bump, bump. Let's get through the fandom synopsis. While walking the streets of Greenwich Village, Valkyrie tries to make sense of where her life is supposed to go. After she stops a bunch of hooded thieves from mugging her, she returns to Doctor Strange's sanctum for advice on how to deal with her aggressiveness towards men, suggesting that perhaps her first step in dealing with peacefully with men would be to seek out her comrades. Strange hands her two crystals that will allow her to find the locations of both Submariner and the Hulk. Finding Namor at the home of Betty Prentice, visiting his cousin Namorita, Val is scolded by Namor for intruding. When explaining that the Defenders are not an ordinary team, the Submariner suddenly is transported away, Realizing the crystal is tracking Namor, Val and Namorita decide to go and pick up the Hulk before going after him. However, when the two get to the Hulk, he is misplaced his rage in a misplaced rage attacks. During his initial strike, he too is transported away. Val and Namorita then decide to find out where they have been transported. They are brought to the location where the defenders previously had fought the computer Omegatron. There, the computer captures the two and informs them, in spite of the fact that it's trapped in a bubble of slower time, it will still end finishing its countdown and destroy the Earth. The computer informs them that they need to do after the countdown is speak the Master's name. When Val and Namori to try to stop, the computer sends duplicates of the Hulk Submariner to try to stop them. Aragon is able to identify the originals, which dispels the duplicates, leaving just the mind-controlled defenders. The Valkyrie manages to fight them off. When the Omegatron reaches zero, it breaks free of its computer housing in a gigantic humanoid form. However, when it can speak its master's name, Val chops off its head, destroying it and saving the world. Afterwards, while the dim-witted Hulk... Hops away angry, Namor tells her that he, she has shown her bravery to that, that day. All right, that is kind of a little... That's... Uh, all right, how do I start on this comic? I love it. Um, I'd like to see the Omegatron back. Uh, it was a nice thing. It's nice, Salby Seymour. I don't know if I think Frank McLaughlin is the best anchor on him, but I did enjoy the, enjoy the art. It was good. I do like Anklehart's writing. Um... Um, it is a comic of the seventies, but he is like, he's my, his rhythm of writing comic books is one that kind of grooves with me. Um, I mean, I do like the story. I do like that. We're going to see a little bit of Val, you know, because this is the third Valkyrie has been a disguise of, uh, the Enchantress, another young lady in a Hulk co comic, which I don't think I've ever read. Uh, there's a little note. If you read the comic, they have a note to it. Um, and then Barbara Norris. But this is Broomhilda, the Valkyrie. And we'll find out more over the years. Who, But she's adapting. And, you know, this this character is created by Roy to be a symbol for feminism and empowerment of women in an Avengers issue. It was, a you know, a 30-some-year-old white guy trying to do that. I get what they were going for, and I do enjoy the Lady Liberators in that Avengers issue. It's a fun issue. I am a big fan of Valkyrie because she is my favorite defender in a lot of ways, um, in most ways. And her story is... The intent is good, but 
in modern sensibilities, it's a little off. I like her character. There's a couple things in this thing I find a little weird, like she's in love with the Black Knight. Is that because of the spell? And I think they talk about it later when we get to the end of the Black Knight plot line in probably about two months because we have to get through the Avengers Defenders War and that's the the the, ult, the final chapter is uh, the the wrap up of the Black Knight storyline. So, but I, I like this and I like that, you know, she wants to be friends. She wants to be a team. We're going to find that with a lot of, of the upcoming recruits um, that some of them really want it to be a real team. She's the first of them. And then I guess Nighthawk and then I guess Hellcat and there are people that come and go. Um, like uh, Yellow Jacket and Daredevil and Power Man. And that's, we're going to have some fun. We're going to have some fun. We've got a lot of fun issues coming up. Guardians of the Galaxy and everything. All right. But I like this story. Um, I, like Ang- I like Englehart 70s comics a lot. I like that she goes on the, you know, then stuff's happening. She walks down the street. She gets attacked. Nice fight scene. Great Sal Buscema energy going on in the pages. I really dig that. Um, she fights it. And then her adventure... Um, of, you know, searching out her friends, her new friends, uh, bonding with Namor. I wish Namorita had stuck around. Um, she eventually is in uh, New Warriors, which I've never read. So I may do that at some point, um, but I've never read it. Um, I do uh, like that part of it, and I like it's more of the uh, of the Omegatron. Uh, Hulk's good in it. It's, it's just a fun, steady comic. I mean, there's nothing really great in it. There's some stuff... Good stuff for Valkyrie's development. She's moving along. She's, you know, she's finding some confidence in herself um, and the and the respect of her fellow defenders, you know. And I like it. It's, you know, it's kind of like old, you know, Silver Age and Bronze Age comics. Uh, you'd have an issue like this, which would be just a character piece to get the character to the place you need him to be to be part of the regular part of the book. And then and Engelhart's inventing new characters or adapting characters to join this thing. And it's I'm a big fan in team books of the second banana hero who joins. I like Hong Kong. I like um, the Thunderbolts because I like seeing these villains, these kind of secondary characters get the spotlight and have someone play with them. And so when you read uh, Busick and Nietzsche's, Fabian Nietzsche's, uh, is uh, Thunderbolts, you have that. And I think that's the kind of thing with Valkyrie, and we're going to get it with Night Nighthawk, and we're going to get it with Hellcat coming up in the future. Is that these kind of per, you know characters from, from the periphery of, of the Marvel universe get the spotlight and become big kind of heroes for a few years? It's kind of like when um, I mean Hercules is was is was popularish, but when him and Black Knight came into Stern, when Stern started using him in his Avengers in the late eighties nineties. Um, they became big stars for about a decade, and this is kind of what you are. The I mean, the Defenders was a popular book. I think I don't know when it stops being kind of a, a top half of the kind of spectrum of comics, but this is I I remember my brother reading this religiously, and this is something that he was giving to me as it came out. I don't think I've gotten to the first one I've read, but I knew I went back and read them. He had them. We've tracked down some other ones, and I've read I've read this comic. Every issue up to about a hundred, maybe a little after. I when it got close to the new defenders, they started to lose me, and I bought it out of habit. And I I don't think I had in time when I had all the floppies. I don't think I had a whole run. Um, I do have all the essentials now, and I bought the issues that were never reprinted in an essential. So I have a whole run, and um, I'm reading the essentials in the in black and white for the first read, and then I read it on the app to get some of the dynamic. The colors in the app, it's a pretty comic for color fun. But um, this one I really liked. I'm enjoying it. I'm looking forward to the next one. Um, let me see something real quick. Uh, it is six, which is an early one I remember reading. Um, and it is a great lineup. Um, and it's just pretty comic. I'm looking forward to that one. So, but that's next week. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to record this weekend, but there'll be an episode up Saturday or Sunday. I have a feeling it may be me talking about comics. I picked up at the comic shop the last two weeks. Um, I like doing that. So I think I'm doing that. I'm recording another, um, comic book, Dr. Who comic podcast with Mark McManus of the trap one podcast. And I'll record that Saturday. It'll be out in two a week from that uh so check that out so folks um it's, i'm gonna wrap this up because i got a work phone chime in and i gotta edit this and get it up tonight but um 
Thank you for listening. Uh, don't forget Saturday, new comic day uh, episode. Um, next Tuesday, the next Legion, my next Legion episode. And then we're going to be covering Defender 6 a week from today on those daring Defenders. Um, and folks, uh, check out my two Doctor Who podcasts, Gallifrey's Most Wanted and the Runcible Report. It's all on the Gallifrey Most Wanted uh, feed. Just Google it. Um, or you can follow me on Twitter at, at Gallifrey's MW Pod. Or if I keep following me on Twitter for this fun show, uh, at JSA4E. That is JSA, the number four, the letter E. And folks, be smart, be kind, be safe, and read some comics. <laughs>